Hello everyone! Today we're going to be talking about Lego Story Visualizer and how to use this app on the iPad. Lego Story Visualizer is an awesome app. It's a great tool for students to use to use Legos and make a comic strip. But, that being said, you do not have to use Legos in order to use the Lego Story Visualizer app. Students can also insert pictures instead of building with Legos, so there are alternatives to using this app. But either way, this is a great tool for students to be thinking about a sequence of events or retelling a story, and honestly the possibilities are endless and I think students could use this in all subjects and all grade levels. So today I'm going to show you what this app looks like on the iPad and just the basics of how to use it so you can start thinking about how to use this in your classroom. Okay, so whenever you're on your iPad, this is what the LEGO Story Visualizer app will look like. So I'm going to go ahead and open it. And then if you have past saved projects, they will pop up. But I'm just going to go ahead and hit the plus sign to create a new project. Now when it pops up, you will have two options. You can either choose a vertical or horizontal comic strip. And then it will give you a variety of options from there. So I'm going to go ahead and choose vertical. And then it will give you several other options once you hit vertical or horizontal. And you can either have one big scene or it gives you some options for the variety of other different scenes. So I'm going to go ahead and click three. I would usually use three with my students just because it was the easiest to see beginning, middle, and end. So your blank comic strip will look like this. And then whenever you want to edit each event, you just click which square you want to edit. Okay, and then up at the top whenever you open the square you will have a bunch of different options. So let's go ahead and talk about first the little person with the camera. When you click that it will give you two options. You can either take a picture right now with your camera which is usually what my students do when they're building with Legos or you can upload from your camera roll. So it will pull up your camera roll and if students have a saved picture they want to upload they can use it from there. Okay. Then the second button is the little mountain scape scene, and that is your background button. So you can scroll through and see a bunch of different backgrounds that you can add to your pictures. So me and my students wrote a story on bats, so I'll use this one. And then once you have it on your comic strip, you can move it around and kind of adjust it to however you want it. Okay. And then let's talk about the next button at the top, which is the little ABC message button. This is your caption button. So you can see the variety of different like speech bubbles, or if you don't even want them to be in a speech bubble, you can just insert words in the air to kind of have like a caption on the side. But I'll insert a speech bubble. And then once you have it on your comic strip, then if you click on it, then it will pop up the little text at the bottom so you can change it and then add whatever you want to in your caption. And then once it's on there, when you have it highlighted, you can make it bigger, smaller, you know, move it around and move it where you want to. Okay, and then the far right button on the top, if you click that, that is your sticker button. So you can scroll through here and there's a bunch of, you know, onomatopoeias or just like props and stickers that go with a lot of the backgrounds. There's a bunch of stuff on here. So I'll do the bat one because that matches my scene. You know, you can see you can highlight and just like the text bubble, make them bigger, smaller, etc. So again, students can still use, they have a lot of stickers on here. Students can still use stickers and, um, you know, make a comic strip even without Legos. And then if you want to delete some, you can see when it's highlighted, there's a trash can over here on the far left. You can just highlight it and click the trash can and it will go away. Okay. And then up here in the top left of the screen, you can see the two different arrows. That will take you forward and back, you know, to undo and redo stuff. Then the button at the top left with like the layered pages. If you click on that button, you'll see everything that you have clicked on to put in your comic strip scene will pop up 
And this button is basically just if you have a lot of layers of pictures and stickers and you lose one, then whenever you click on each one, it will just highlight it for you so you can find it. So like I clicked on the pumpkin and it highlighted it, or the bat, it'll highlight it. You know, so that can be useful if you have a lot that you've put on your comic strip. Then on the right side, we kind of already talked about the trash can button. And then the next button down, you have to click on your background to access these buttons. But the next button down is the eraser button. If you click on that, then over here on the left side, you'll see a few different buttons. The first is the eraser button. And that will help you erase parts of the background or if your students have taken a picture of like a Lego scene, my students used to erase the background around the Legos so it was just the Legos that showed up in the picture. And then down here at the bottom you have two little scales that will let you change the size and the blurriness of your pen. You can kind of see the differences there. <laughs> And then the next button down, the paintbrush, if you click on that, that will basically just let you repaint everything that you just did with your eraser. And then if you want all the eraser gone, you can click the very bottom button with the eraser X and it'll take it all away. The third button down that's like the little magic wand, if you click that and then click your picture, it will kind of do like the opposite effect on different parts of your picture. I don't really know what you could use this for. It kind of whites it out but I don't know your students can definitely get creative and do that so yeah and then when you're done just hit the little check mark at the bottom okay and then the third button down with the mountains and the three colors if you click that that basically just gives you the option to give your background a filter so if you want to change it make it look a little different or your pictures also it'll let you give your pictures a filter you can do that as well and then the last two buttons are basically just your copy and paste buttons. So I'm going to highlight the pumpkin and then press the two pictures. So that's my copy. And then the bottom button is my paste. So if I click that, you can see I have another pumpkin that pops up. So if you don't want to go all the way back through to find a matching sticker, you can just copy and paste. And then the last thing I want to show you is if I click my speech bubble, you can see there's a few options that pop up on a new bar. So the first one is you can change your font and students can really get creative if they want the font to you know match the picture. And then the second button is just the centering of the text like wherever you want to center it. And then the third button is the text color. So I can change that. And then the fourth button is the background color. So if I want to change the background color of the text bubble. So there's definitely a lot of options on here for editing and students can really get creative to change a lot of stuff in these pictures. And I saw my students get even more creative when they were able to use Legos and put Legos in these pictures as well. So whenever you're done editing each scene, you just press the top left corner back button. And then you can see your scene show up in your comic strip. And then you can just keep going through the rest of the scenes to finish and make your whole comic strip. Now the last thing I want to show you is in the bottom right corner, if you press that button, you can add another comic strip. I'll add this one. And basically that will make you have multiple pages in your comic strip, almost like a little book. So if you wanted to make a complete new comic strip, you'd have to press the top left back button. And that would take you to your home page, and then you could create a new separate project from there. But if you wanted to have multiple pages in the same comic strip, or you know maybe even have your students make a comic strip book eventually, then it definitely gives you the option to do that, which is great. And then up in the top right corner, if you ever want your students to submit your comic strips, um, or I guess view them in the full screen then if you press the top right button let me go back the top right button that looks like a book that will make the comic strip go in full screen and I used to have my students do this whenever they would airplay it onto my Apple TV and they would present it or if I wanted them to screenshot it so I can go back and grade it and look at it later 
Um, where I had younger students, it was the easiest just to have them screenshot it, and I would go back and look at the iPads and grade them later, um, because submitting it can kind of take a few minutes, and, you know, students on the younger side don't always have the patience for that. So screenshotting it is definitely what I did. But an alternative is in the top and the middle you'll see the PDF buttons. The middle one will let you download it as a PDF onto your iPad. The far left one will let you email it but I just don't have my email set up on this iPad. And then the far right option will pull up all of the options that you have which is AirDrop, email, and if you have any connecting apps, those will pop up. Um, you can always copy it, print it. You know, you have a few different options for exporting your comic strip once you're done as well. So, yeah. So, hopefully that helped and gave you a quick tutorial on how to use LEGO Story Visualizer. So, hopefully that tutorial was helpful for you all to kind of get a better idea of how the LEGO Story Visualizer app works on the iPad. But before we go, I just wanted to provide you with a few tips on how LEGO Story Visualizer works in the classroom just from my experience. So these tips are for K-12 and I think this app and these tips are beneficial for all grade levels. So first of all, give your students time to practice using the app. Obviously upper grades are not going to need near as much time to practice, but for my elementary students, I pretty much gave them like a whole activity to just practice using the app. The activity was really simple so they could all have time to take turns and share and figure out how to use the app so the next time we used it they were just ready to go. So the second thing is set a timer. I found that 20 to 30 minutes for my third graders was perfect. So the comic strips got better throughout the year as they had more practice but it was definitely beneficial for me to set a timer just right, just barely enough time for them to finish. Otherwise, if you give them too much time, then they'll start doing silly stuff or get off task. So definitely think it's important to set a timer when you're using this app. Number three, tell them how many events you want them to have. So as you saw in the tutorial, there's several different options for the type of comic strip you want to make. And then that also includes several different amounts of events. So I usually used three just so I could get my elementary students thinking about beginning, middle, and end, but again, depending on your grade level, you may just want them to have one or six I think is the max, so just think about that whenever you're planning your lesson for this as well. Okay, so number four. Tell them that they have to include dialogue in each event. So, ran into this problem also, if you don't tell them to include dialogue or captions or words in each event, then you'll just end up with a comic strip with a bunch of pictures. So, be sure to tell them to do that. Number five, assign roles so they're not fighting over the iPad. If you have a limited number of iPads in your classroom, which I did, um, so I had to put them in like groups of four or five, I found it really valuable to assign them roles so I usually had um, a director that was kind of directing the person with the iPad, the person reading the text, the person building the Legos, you know, directing everyone. And then kind of like I just said, um, I had someone in charge of the iPad. And then I had um, someone building the Legos, one or two people. And then I also had um, someone looking through the text so they could pull quotes from the text or keep the other students on track of what they're supposed to be building and then what they're supposed to be writing about in the comic strip. So definitely assign roles. That helps a lot of the fighting over the iPad. And then when you've got the timer going, they just immediately go to their role and start working. So there's no time to fight over the iPad. So number six, you can use Legos, or if you trust them to upload pictures on their own from the internet, you can do that too. That's probably more for older students, but that's always an option as well. And number seven, you can have them act out scenes and take pictures. So I remember up through high school, we would act out Romeo and Juliet. So you could always have them in small groups acting out scenes from the story and then taking pictures of that and then having captions. So again, don't even have to use Legos, but you're still using the comic strip and sequence of events and all that stuff. So again there's many options to use this for a variety of subjects and grade levels so i think this app is awesome to use in the classroom 
So that's all I have for you today. I hope this tutorial was helpful and I hope my tips were helpful for whenever you start thinking about using this app in the classroom. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.